Hi everyone. Noon Android 11 is the ability for apps to create seamless transitions between the on-screen keyboard being open and then closed. And it's all powered by lots of improvements to the Window Insets APIs in Android 11. So here you can see two examples of it in action. It has been integrated into the Google Search app as well as the Messages app on the right. The days of the keyboard snapping instantly onto screen are hopefully gone. So let's take a look at how you can add this sort of experience to your apps. So there are three steps which we'll go through in this video. The first step is by going edge to edge. The second step is by reacting to inset animations. And the third step is by apps taking control of and driving inset animations, if it makes sense for your app. So let's start with step one, going edge to edge. Last year, we introduced the concept of going edge to edge as a way for apps to make the most of the new gestural navigation in Android 10. If you missed our talk from Android Dev Summit last year, or the accompanying blog post series, you can find them in the URLs below. But as a quick recap, going edge to edge results in your app drawn behind the system bars. So going from this, where the status and navigation bars have opaque backgrounds, to this, where the app is drawn behind the system bars, resulting in the blurring between the lines of the app versus the system. So what has going edge to edge got to do with the keyboard? Well, going edge to edge is actually more than just drawn behind the system bars. It's apps taking responsibility for handling those pieces of system UI, which might overlap with the app. So the two obvious examples are the status bar and the navigation bar, which we mentioned earlier. But then we also have the on-screen keyboard, or the IMEs it's sometimes referred to. So this is why going edge to edge is related to handling the keyboard. It's just another piece of system UI to be aware of. So how do apps go edge to edge? Well, if you flash back to a section of our ADS talk from last year, going edge to edge is made up of three tasks. We're going to skip the first task because nothing has changed since last year but the guidance for two and three have been updated with some new changes in Android 11. Let's take a look. For the second step, apps needed to use the system UI visibility API with a whole bunch of flags to request to be laid out full screen. If you're using this API and have updated your compile SDK version to 30, you'll have seen that all of these APIs are now deprecated. They've been replaced with a single function on window called set decor fit system windows. And instead of the many flags, you now pass in a Boolean. False, if apps want to handle any system window fit themselves, or true, if apps want the deck or two instead, which is the default value. We do also have a Jetpack version of the function available in Window Compact, which was recently released in Android X Core. That's the second step updated. Now let's take a look at the third step, avoiding overlaps with the system UI. That can be summarized as using window insets to know where to move content to, to avoid conflicts with the system UI. So if we take a look at the Window Insets API before API 30, the most common inset type to use would be the system window inserts. These cover the status and navigation bars, but also the keyboard when it's open. Previously, though, there wasn't a way to distinguish between the IME or the navigation bar when it's open. It would just get one value. To use Window Insets, you would typically add an unapplied Window Insets listener to a view, and then handle any insets which are passed to it. Here, we're fetching the system window insets and then updating the views padding to match, which is a very common use case and which you'll find in a lot of apps. But there are a number of other inset types available, including the recently added gesture insets. Now, again, on API 30, these have been deprecated. Instead of having the individual types as properties like this, we now have some new APIs, which allow you to query the insets for different types. There are three functions. Get insets, which will return the visible insets for the given types. Get insets ignoring visibility, which returns the insets regardless of whether they're visible or not. And then finally, is visible, which returns whether the given type is visible. Now, we've just mentioned types a lot there. Now, these are defined in the window insets.typed class as various functions, each returning an integer. You can combine multiple types together using a bitwise or to query for combined types, which we'll see in a minute. We also have a Jetpack version available in Android X Core. So if we go back to our example from before, let's update it to the new APIs. System window insets becomes get insets with a combined type of system bars and IME. Stable insets becomes a call to get insets ignoring visibility with the system bars type. And the final two become calls to get insets with a matching type. Now, the keen eyed among you may have been looking at this list of types and have been looking at one type in particular, the IME type. 
Well, we can finally answer this Stack Overflow question from over 10 years ago now about how to check the visibility of the keyboard. To get the current keyboard visibility, we can fetch the root window insets and then call the easy visible function passing in the IME type. Similarly, if you want to find out the height, we can do that too. If we instead want to listen to changes to the keyboard visibility, we can use the normal on apply window insets listener and then use the same functions on the insets passed to the listener. Now, since we're on a roll of answering Stack Overflow questions, how about this one from 11 years ago of how to close the keyboard? So here we're going to introduce another new API in Android 11 called Window Insets Controller. Apps can get access to a controller from any view and can then show and hide the keyboard as they wish by passing in the IME type. But hiding and showing the keyboard isn't all that the controller can do. Earlier, we mentioned that some of the system UI flags have been deprecated, replaced with a new API. While there are a number of other system UI flags available related to change in the system UI appearance or visibility, and these have also been deprecated in API 30. Now, instead of going through the migration for all of these flags, we'll cover a few common scenarios and see how to update them. So here you can see a drawing app, which hides the system UI to maximize the space available for drawing. To implement that using Window Insets Controller, we use the hide and show functions like before, but this time passing in the system bars type. The app also uses immersive mode, allowing the user to swipe the system bars back in. To implement that using the window insets controller, we change the hide and show behavior to show bars by swipe. Similarly, if you're using the sticky immersive mode instead, this is implemented with the show transient bars by swipe behavior instead. Now these are exactly the same behaviors as before, just hopefully with clearer names. The next scenario is about the status bar content color. So here you can see an example where we have a dark status bar background with light content, such as the time and the icons. But if we instead want a light status bar background with dark content, we can use Window Insets Controller to do that too. To do that, we can use the set system bars appearance function, passing in the light status bars value. As you can see at the bottom, you could also implement this in your theme instead, if you know the value won't change. Similarly, if you want to reset it so that you have a dark status bar background, you can pass in zero to clear the value. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any compact APIs for this yet, but we are working on them. Stay tuned for more information. And that's the first step done. Now we move on to insert animations. So here we have a fake chat app. When the user clicks on the text input to type reply, the keyboard animates into place, but the app snaps between the two states. Now, this is the behavior you've seen on your devices for a while. It's just slowed down so it's a lot more obvious. Now let's look at what's possible in Android 11. This time when the user clicks on the text input, the app moves with the keyboard to create a much more seamless experience. The API which powers this in Android 11 is the new Window Insets animation class, which covers an animation involving insets. Apps can listen to animation events through the callback class, which can be set on any view. So let's take a look at the callback class and the functions it provides. Let's imagine that the user has just clicked on the text input and the system is about to start showing the keyboard. At this point, unprepared is called, which allows apps to record any view state from the current layout. After unprepare, the normal window insets will be dispatched to the view hierarchy containing the end state. This means that your views on apply window insets listener will be called, which may cause the layout pass to reflect the end state. Next up is on start, which is called the start of the animation. This allows apps to record the view state of the target or the end state. Next up is the most important call on progress. This is called every time the insets change in the animation. In the case of the keyboard, this will be as it slides in on screen. And finally, on end is called when the animation is finished, which you can use to clear up any old state. So that's a walk through the API. Now let's create an example. So first, we'll assume that we have an on apply window insets listener set, which handles the IME being visible or not. Now let's add a window insets animation callback. First, we'll override on prepare and record the bottom coordinate of the view before any layout changes have happened. At this point, the end state insets will be dispatched and our on apply window insets listener called. Our listener updates the padding of the container view, which results in the content being pushed up. The user never sees this though, as we'll soon find out. Next, we have our onStart function, which allows us to record the end position of the view. But because we don't want the user to see the end state right now, 
we shift the view back down to its original position using translation Y. The user doesn't see a flicker as the system guarantees that the layout and on start are called in the same frame. Then finally, we override on progress, which allows us to update our view as the keyboard slides in. We use translation Y again, interpolating between the start and the end states to make the view move in unison with the keyboard. And that was step two, reacting to instant animations. The third and final step is optional for a lot of apps. And we think it's mostly useful for apps with lots of text input, such as chat and communication apps. So here we have our chat app again, but this time the app isn't only reacting to the keyboard coming onto the screen from focusing in the input field. This time the app is taking control of the keyboard and moving it based on the user dragging and flinging the conversation list. Now this is actually three different things working together. The first, is that we need something to drive the animation. Now, usually this would be nested scrolling or maybe touch input. And then we need to react to win window inset animations, which we covered in the previous section. And then finally, we're going to introduce another new API from Android 11 called the Window Insets Animation Controller. This API allows apps to take control and drive inset animations themselves. The Animation Controller API is very general and powerful, but it's also quite complex to use and explain in a video like this. A full exploration of the API is beyond the scope of this video, but our sample here shows how to implement it in full. In that sample, we've written a number of helper classes to simplify the implementation for certain use cases. One of the classes is called Simple IME Animation Controller, which is all about controlling the keyboard. Let's take a step through the class to see how to use it. The first function it provides is called start control request. And you would call that when you want to take control of the keyboard. Next, we have a function called is inset animation in progress, which returns whether there is an inset animation in progress at the moment. Next, we have a function to inset or move the keyboard by a pixel value. And then finally, we have functions to finish and cancel the animation. So that's what simple IME animation controller provides. Now let's use it to implement this. We're going to create an on-touch listener, which allows the user to bring in the keyboard off and on screen by dragging the text input itself. So here we have an on-touch function with some code blocks for the different action types. From any move actions, we first check if there's an animation in progress. If not, we start a request to take control. But if there is an animation in progress, we inset the keyboard by the amount that the user dragged by calling inset by. And then finally, we hook up the finish and cancel calls to the appropriate action types. And this is what it looks like in practice. We can now drag on the text input, which brings in the keyboard as the user drags up and down. So those are the three steps to implementing keyboard animations in Android 11. If you'd like to know more information about the APIs that I spoke about in this video, I'd highly recommend looking through the sample app, as well as documentation on the various new APIs. Thanks for watching.